Hi everyone, JJIR here. In this video, we're going to see how to set up a Raspberry Pi with just Wi-Fi and a Chromebook. So you'll need, first of all, a Raspberry Pi. We suggest the Raspberry Pi 4B with four gigabytes of RAM, but any Raspberry Pi 3B plus and above will be just fine. As long as you have something that's adequate to be able to be used, and you will also need a micro SD card, and we suggest that it be eight gigabytes or more. We will add links for both of those things in the description below. Then you'll need to go to ubuntu.com slash download slash Raspberry Pi to download the Ubuntu Pi image. We're gonna use Ubuntu instead of Raspbian because Ubuntu is more universal. We'll be using either three or four, and we'll use the 64-bit version of either one of these, depending on the version of the Raspberry Pi that you have. We're also going to focus on Ubuntu 20.04. So the idea here is to download one of these two. Right now I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, and I'm going to be downloading the 64-bit version here. Once that's downloaded, you're going to have a file that's called img.xz. But on a Chromebook, we can't open this up. So we're going to have to use another application which is this one here, Archive Extractor, and I will also leave this link in the description so that you can extract this and leave it as a zip file. In this case, you're just going to go here and choose File, and then we're going to select the XT file that we have here. We're gonna click on Open, and we're gonna let that upload. It's gonna take about 15 minutes, and then afterwards, it will give you a button to allow you to download the new zip image file, and that is what we're going to use. So as you can see here, I already have this downloaded as a normal zip file after having done that process. So we're just gonna start by using this, but just make sure you finish off that process so that everything works correctly. So once you have the zip archive downloaded, what you want to do is actually plug in your micro SD hard drive that you have ready to go so we can continue the process. And that will come out here, as you can see. Now this name could be different for you. That doesn't make any difference. You just have to make sure that it's already connected. After you're done with that, you need to make sure you have installed what we call the Chromebook Recover Utility. This is what we're going to use on a Chromebook to flash our image to the micro SD card. So after we have this installed, in this case I already have it ready to go, I can launch this and we can begin our process. Here we're going to go and click on Get Started, and then we're going to go up to the upper right where the cog is and click that and then click on Use Local Image. After we click on that, it's going to allow us to use the zip file that we downloaded in the previous step, and then we're gonna click on Open. Once that's done, we can select our micro SD card so we can flash the image there, and click on Continue. Afterwards, it's going to tell us that everything else on the flash drive will be deleted to do this process, and now we're going to click on Create Now. And this will take about 15 minutes, and so we will come back when this is done so we can continue the process. Now that that has finished, all we have to do is click on Done here, and then we're gonna go back to our file manager here. And before we eject the SD card, we're actually going to go in here, and we're gonna click on System Boot, and here we're going to find a file that's called Network Config, and we're going to open that up. But we can't open that up with just double click because that will just open it up here in a tab, which will not allow us to edit it. So when we're back here, we actually have to right click it, and then we have to click on Open With, or it might even come out with open with an application you already have installed. In this case, we'll just click on open with, and here we're gonna click on Carrot. You can also use something like Material Neutron, but Carrot is a fairly universal markdown text editor that we can use to edit these things. And we're gonna have to go down here and uncomment from here from 15, and we're gonna go down to 21, getting rid of these pound signs. And then finally, we have to change this and this to what corresponds with our own Wi-Fi network where we are. So here, if this was simply something like my house Wi-Fi, then we'd have to put double quotation marks and then put my house Wi-Fi. And down here, we would add the rest of what we needed for the password. So I'm going to put my own stuff here right now, but you just need to make sure that if your password, if your network name has spaces, you need to put it in between quotation marks. And the password, you should just leave the quotation marks as is and just change the password. So we're gonna do that now. 
And then after we're done with that, we're going to go up here to where it says File, and then click on Save File. After we're done with that, then all we have to do is close that up. For those who have never used Carrot before, we have it right here. You can go to carrot.io, and then the Chrome extension is actually this one here, and I will leave these also in the description under the video. So once we're done with using Carrot to edit our network config file, we can finally go here and eject the SD card. Make sure it disappears here so that you don't have any problems with it later on. Now we can unplug the SD card and finally plug it into the Raspberry Pi so we can continue on with our process. Once you have inserted the SD card inside your Raspberry Pi and you have powered it on by plugging it into the either USB-C if it's a Raspberry 4 and the USB micro USB if it's a Raspberry Pi 3, then afterwards, what we need to do is open up our Linux terminal here on the Chromebook. Now, if you don't have Linux installed, I'm going to put another video in the description below so you can see how to do that process. But I'm going to presuppose that's already done. And what we need to do here is make sure that everything is updated. This here with Control shift v I will also put this in the description, just to make sure that everything is updated before we continue on with the process. So once that's done, we can actually clear that up. And now we're ready to actually begin what we want to do with the Raspberry Pi. In this case, we need to install two things, which are going to be the net tools and the nmap if those things are not installed already. So after we have sudo apt-get install net tools nmap and the Y standing for yes, then we'll click on enter and we'll see if those things are installed or not. In this case, they are, so that's all ready to go. So after we're done with that, what we want to do is now we need to find the recently turned on Raspberry Pi to see if it's available within our Wi-Fi network here. So to be able to do this, we actually need to find our gateway IP address so we can scan the Wi-Fi network to see what's on the Wi-Fi network. And for the Chromebook, what we need to do here is we actually need to go to settings. So to do that, we need to go to the lower left-hand corner where the launcher is, click on that, and here in the search bar, we're going to click and find the app called Settings. Now I have it here below, it's called Settings, but if it doesn't come out, it's because it hasn't been used recently. So you're going to click here and type Settings so that we can find that application and open it up and it will look something like this when you finally find it. So once you open that up, you're going to click on Network here, and then click on your present Wi-Fi connection, which should be under Wi-Fi here, so you have Network and then Wi-Fi. And then here we're going to click on the connected Wi-Fi connection that you actually have. And then here we're going to go to Network, and then down below we will find the gateway IP address, and this is what we're going to use to look with Nmap to find whatever is connected to our Wi-Fi network. So after we have that IP address, now what you want to do is go into your Linux terminal. And then we're going to put in Nmap and then dash lowercase s, uppercase p, and then the IP address that we copied from network under the gateway. And then at the end, we're going to put a slash 24, and then we're going to click on enter so we can find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi running Ubuntu. And that one should come out similar, equal to ubuntu.lan, and that's the one we want here. And then the IP address that's beside that one is the one we're going to use to SSH into that Raspberry Pi. So now we'll do an SSH, Ubuntu, at and then that IP address and then we're going to click on enter. It's going to ask us if we want to enter there and we're going to click on we're going to type yes and then it's going to ask us for a password. So for the Raspberry Pi when you install Ubuntu on it the password is going to be Ubuntu as well. After we type in the password you won't see anything it makes no difference as long as you typed correctly Ubuntu in lowercase you'll be fine and then we're going to click on enter. The first time we enter, Ubuntu is going to tell us that our password has expired, and this is okay. What we need to do now is we need to set a new password so that we can jump in and start working on our new Raspberry Pi. So the first thing you need to do here is to put in the current password, which will be Ubuntu again, then click on enter, and then you put in your new password here, which can be anything. Enter, and then retype it exactly the same way, 
and then enter. Afterwards, it'll say that the connection was closed. That's not a problem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to clear this up and then enter in again. And we're going to use the new password now. Now we can type clear. And now we are officially inside of our brand new Raspberry Pi with Ubuntu 20.04 installed with our server set up. And now all we have to do is begin to install everything we want to install on our Raspberry Pi. And we'll see those in other videos. But if you want to start off, I'm going to give another video under the video here in the description, which allows you to set everything up in Ubuntu. And then from there, you can follow the other videos for what we're going to use this for in the future. Just before we finish off here, I just wanted to give a quick comment that I've done this process various times, and it turns out that sometimes when you run Nmap, the IP address is either not named or it does not even come out. And so if that ends up happening, you'll have to connect the Raspberry Pi to an Ethernet connection as well as your Chromebook to see if the IP address comes out that way. In other cases, when I did this, the Wi-Fi didn't even turn on in the Raspberry Pi when I started it up. And in that case, you're going to need to connect the Raspberry Pi to a screen to see if the Wi-Fi turns on or not. And if not, once again, you're going to have to use the Ethernet connection. So unfortunately, a lot of these things came up when I was doing this multiple times. But keeping that in mind, having an Ethernet cable on hand, an HDMI cable on hand, just in case you have to connect it to Ethernet or a screen so you can see the information you need, you should be good to go. But just keep that in mind and don't try to do this without any extra instruments at hand because it may not work if you do it just on the first time. Keeping that in mind, you should be ready to go. If you like this video, please subscribe, give a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to check those out. Otherwise, take care.